Three, two, one, go! Each actor would walk into the room and they were all nervous. The opening title sequence is going to be a dance number. And so you can imagine if that's all the information you have, am I going to be learning in a minute and a half of complex dance material? Like, I'm not practiced at this. I wasn't going for perfection. There's something about each character bringing their own quality that keeps it interesting. So there was this sort of finding a fine line between nailing it and allowing for some freedom for imperfection as well. The whole process started with uh, getting a phone call and uh, got the song and I had about a minute to grab a few different ideas and then fast forward to a couple of days later, I had a chance to come up with some more specific ideas for how I would see it and I just kind of like went from there. So the very seeds of the dance actually started over a weekend when I was just grabbing, you know, influences and different ideas, and the rest just kind of took off. My husband, who's an actor, his name is Alan Tudyk, sort of represented for me an ideal choreographic assistant, <laughs> in the sense that he, he's not a trained dancer, but he moves really well. So we got into his studio and came up with the very first phrase together. And then from there, we just continued to build it out. When John Cena was not available to stand in, Alan would step in for him. There was something about his self-consciousness that also allowed me to see how the movement might translate on other actors who don't consider themselves to be dancers. And there was a certain comic element to it. So I was very, very aware of that as I was doing this as well, that if we take it very seriously and approach it very seriously, the ridiculousness of it will take care of the funny part and it'll be a nice balance between, um, you know, which is also representative of the show. It's this insane world that James has created. How many people does this blow up? I don't know, I invented it this morning. What? Eat peace, mother. I did a lot of research on them. I found some clips of Danielle dancing, and I was told a little bit later in the process that Jen Holland is a former gymnast, so also body awareness, and Steve Agee surprised me with how quickly he was able to move because he's six foot six. I was pretty impressed by uh, Robert Patrick's hip thrust. He was just 150% there with that hip thrust. He did not hold back, and I didn't see that until the day. In the rehearsals, he held back for me, and then he just saved it all for the, for the shoot, which was fun. I expected a lot of John, just because I had been told that he's very, very quick study, and he's willing to, to do anything. He's a great collaborator, and um, so the expectations were high, and, and sure enough, it was one of the most hyper-focused hours in my professional life. Like, there are just some people that are laser-focused, a truly impressive person. Oh my God, he's, he's hugging me. He's hugging me. Dad, grab my phone, I don't wanna move. The shoot was one day, which is insane. I started staging it in HQ, so the Peacemaker headquarters, the set. So when we shifted from that space onto a stage, I was able to pull a lot of the influence from the original choreography that happened in the HQ space onto the stage, I had to modify a lot. And there's actually, I would say about half of it is different. It had to change because it's a very different, you know, the stage is much more presentational. You know, like the double doors, which were originally the van, on the stage became building double doors in the back of the stage. And some of the camera movements were created in the space, in the HQ space, and we were able to use those on the stage. So the work that I made in HQ had a big influence on the final work on the stage. And I think that's some of the layering that in watching it, you're not aware of, but adds a depth, adds some dimension to it that otherwise might not have been in there. Yeah.